Hey, what's up you guys? So you're watching Team APS and today I'm going to be answering a question that a lot, and I mean a lot, of people have sent me and that's um, how to catch back up with Yu-Gi-Oh! if you are a returning veteran player. Uh, I get messages all the time with people saying something along the lines of, I quit, you know, five or six or eight or ten years ago and you know, I want to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh! What do I need to do? What do I need to know? What do I need to buy? Will my old deck you know, be good, what do I need to change, what are the new cards, how does everything work, all these things. And um, I sometimes respond to those, but I decided that it might be better to just kind of make one concise video, kind of just catching people up on the standards of Yu-Gi-Oh! today, some of the things you should invest in, some of the ideas that maybe you should just drop, um, stuff you should research, stuff you should know. And uh, we will get this show on the road. What? All right. Well. The big thing, and I know a lot of people complain about this, is um, <clears throat> Xyz, Synchros, Pendulums. Um, these are the new things. People do not know what these are, how they work, why they're important. So um, I'll just kind of break them down. I'm not going to sit here and explain like, exactly you know, the mechanics behind it. But basically, what Synchro monsters are, it takes a tuner monster and a non-tuner monster. I'm probably going to add examples in here, maybe. Um, I have to. Probably edit them in. Um, but yeah, like, a Synchro Monster is a tuner and a non-tuner, and if their levels add up to whatever their Synchro Monster's level is, then it makes a Synchro. So if I take a level 2 tuner and a level 5 non-tuner, I make a level 7 Synchro Monster from my extra deck. This was previously called a Fusion deck, but now it's an right. extra deck. It's 15 cards. And that includes Synchros, Xyz, and we'll get to Pendulums later. God, this shit makes everything confusing. Fusions. Um... Yeah, and old fusion still. So, um, <clears throat> that's what synchro monsters are. Kind of the basic idea with synchros is they're usually used in combos. So when you make a synchro, you aren't necessarily ending there. Uh, sometimes you make a synchro and like then you kind of make another synchro out of that because synchros can be used with a tuner and still make another synchro. Think, um, stuff like that. Anything important about synchros, maybe um, a new, an older player might kind of need to know to to get back on track. Common synchro monsters. Com I mean, today it's different, huh? Yeah, today it's totally different from back when... Yeah, I mean, I guess some of the, the major synchros that you'll probably see a lot, depending, and it just kind of depends on what decks you're facing. Stardust Dragons, kind of... Scrap uh, Dragon. Scrap Dragon, Stardust Dragon. So Stardust Dragon is this card that can negate anything that would destroy cards. So he's a real threat. Scrap Dragon can destroy one card on each player's side of the field. Black just blow them both up. Black Rose Dragon. Um, it's in a lot of play. It blows up the entire field. It's a level 7. Including level. itself. Um, the more common synchro levels be like 6, 7, 8. Those are kind of the ones you'll see made the most. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, these days 9 is popular too. Cause well, 5 through 8 is probably the, the most the, the most relevant. Yeah. But yeah, now these days they're, they're making 9s. And if you want to get risky, that's 10 and above. But. So the cool part about synchros too is that if you want to incorporate them into your deck, you just have to find tuner monsters that work with your deck. And... These days it's not really tough because most tuner monsters serve some sort of a dual purpose. Um, Effect Veiler is a hand trap, which I'll kind of explain a bit later, but um, it's like a tuner or, you know, emergency teleport can summon things like Krebins and Psychic Commander, which gives you, gives you like kind of an immediate tuner yes. with a quick play spell. Um, Glow of Bulb and Plague Spreader Zombie can be used twice, so these are kind of useful things to look into for tuner monsters. You can talk about Xyz though. Um, Xyz, they're the black cards. Yeah, synchros are white. Yeah, the white that. cards. Yeah, that's why I talked about synchros. And I had the black cards. Yeah, we completely made that up on the spot. <laughs> that's crazy. We <laughs> sure did. But yes, um, Xyz are now uh, there. These are uh, black cards. Um, they are now considered part of your extra deck. And the difference from them and any other monster is that their stars are on the opposite side of the card. And the reason being is because Xyz don't have levels; they have ranks. And the way to make an Xyz is, unlike Synchros, where you need a tuner with another level to make a specific level because they're combined, you add them. With uh, Xyz, actually, you need two monsters of the exact same level, and you're going to overlay them as if they were becoming one. And so let's just say I have two level four monsters on the field. I'm going to take one, put it on top of the other, take the Xyz monster from my extra deck, and lay that on top of both of those cards. 
So the way that this goes is that this Xyz monster now has two material, because that's what they're called, has two material under it, which will be used to pay the cost to activate whatever effect it has, if it has an effect. Yeah. Um, a lot, uh, and, and, and the thing with the Xyz as opposed to synchros is, in these days the age, it's actually a lot easier for it to make Xyz as opposed to synchros, yeah. because You synchros, shouldn't have two monsters at the same level. Yeah, two levels. Synchros are required, they require a tuner first off, and they require a specific level of, of both the monsters to, uh, to make something else. Like, right right. they've yeah. got to add. Whereas in Xyz, if I have this three and this three, anything in my extra deck that's a three, that's, that's a rank three, is now a viable target for the, for, for the field. So some important things to know about that too is that because these things don't have levels, they aren't affected by anything that lists like affecting a monster's level. So Gravity Bind. Gravity Bind says like, you know, level four and lower, or just level four and higher. No, level four, level higher. four and higher monsters are switched to defense position. No, so they can't Or just attack. can't attack. Oh, that's level 11 area B. Level, yeah, but, but same thing with level 11 area B. Yeah. Level 4 higher. Stuff like that. Xyz aren't affected by that. Burden of the Mighty. Things like yeah. that. They specifically say level because they are considered Xyz have ranks. ranks. Another thing that's important to know about Xyz monsters is that the cards that are underneath them aren't considered to be cards on the field. On the field. They're just Xyz material. So if a card says, when this card is sent from the field to the grave, you can do this, that, and the other, it doesn't work if it's an Xyz material. So, um, what's a really good example of that? Uh, Saints Ban. Reborn, Reborn Tengu is a good card. Reborn Tengu says if this card leaves the field for any reason, you are allowed to bring out another copy of it. Well, if it's used as an Xyz, it doesn't technically leave the field, so you cannot bring out another copy of it. It becomes a part of the Xyz monster that you use to make it. So you do not get this effect to bring out another one. So that being said, there are cards that say when this card is sent to the grave, Period. they will get their effect. Um, Dandelion. Detached. Dandelion, Burning Abyss. We'll uh, any burning, get any burning Abyss monster. Uh, we'll get into that, I guess, a bit later. Are. But, um... Yeah, so that's just something that's really important to know and something that kind of causes a lot of confusion for most people with um, Xyz monsters. Also, when Xyz don't have materials, they just kind of chill. When you monster reborn them, they or like use anything to bring them back, I should say. Um, they don't get any materials with them, so they'll just be a beat stick. Right. But um, sometimes that can be useful. Um, I got it for Xyz. Yes. I think Xyz are a lot simpler to make than Synchros. So the new monsters in the block are Pendulum Summons, and these are these are already really controversial. Um, oh, yeah. How do I explain this? That I think it's kind of tough. Um, they're half monster, half spell. But you're they're... probably already clicking away now. <laughs> Stay with us. Yeah, um, they're half monster, half spell. But they count as monsters in the hand. They are, they're, on, they're, they're only spells if you play them as spells. While in the hand or in the deck, they're considered as monsters, so you cannot search for them as spells in any other way. And when you put them on the board, they go into these new zones called the Pendulum Zones, which is in the far, maybe this is the left, technically, and the right. Yeah. So, um, there are two Pendulum Zones. You put one on each zone. They have these numbers by these little jewel symbols. I'm going to put up a visual so yes. you can see this. Um, that are called their scale numbers. Correct. So, if I have a scale 2 monster over here and a scale 7 monster over here, I can do what's called a Pendulum Summon. Which is a once per turn thing where I summon as many monsters as I want from my hand or face up from my extra deck. I'll get to that in a second. Don't go in weird. Um, that have levels between two and seven. So three so through six. Three through six, yes. And why did I say face up in my extra deck? Why would a card be face up in your extra deck, Trill? Well, the reason being is because the way pendulums are in the game mechanic is that when a pendulum is destroyed or is sent from the field, it does not go to the graveyard. Since it is a pendulum monster, it goes to the extra deck face up. That includes if it's in the pendulum zone or if it's actually taking up space in your monster zone. When this card is destroyed, or let's just say it's tributed, instead of going to the graveyard, it will go face up to your extra deck. Yeah, and so you can re-summon those pendulum monsters from your extra deck by doing a pendulum summon. So if you have three pendulum monsters that are all level four in your extra deck face up, they've died sometime earlier, and then you have two scales, like a two and a seven, you can summon from your hand monsters, and you can summon those face-up pendulums from the extra deck. Correct. It's a little bit confusing, but there actually are some tutorial videos on that. I would recommend looking up a tutorial for kind of more of a a better breakdown than what we right, can provide. Right, more visual than um, what we can just But that's kind of the basics of it. Now that we've covered the summoning mechanics, let's talk about a few uh, stand, kind of today's standards as opposed to like yesteryear's standards. Um, Completely different. Love to start by saying Many cards today are searchable. Um, searchability is a common thing. Back in the day, cards like Reinforcement of the Army were kind of the only 
real cards that got something from your deck to your hand for free. Saying in which? By today's standards, pretty Every much day. any given deck will search its cards. Um, it'll have, you know, Heretics have Heretics Yellow Convocation, just grabs one. Um, you know, have, all fusion, yeah, all all hit hog. yeah, many cards have just a spell or a monster that you can just quickly get them what they need. Um, what that means too is that you are expected to, you know, kind of use a deck that provides that coherence, that is to say an archetype, right? Um, combo decks or original decks, ragtag decks, whatever you want to call them, decks that have just sort of, um, Kind of just a mosh pit of cards. Don't really cut it anymore. Right. Randomness isn't exactly the best thing because now it's, it's, if randomness has been foregone for consistency and power. Yeah, you have to. When, what do I mean by archetypes? Archetypes, you know, cards that all share the same name. So you take a card like Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Bear. Right. There's also Brotherhood of the Fire Fist. What's it called? Um, Rhino. There's, Rhino, uh, there's Rooster. There's Hawk. All these things. And so um, they all kind of work together. Together, yeah. They and. These decks will generally have more consistency and more powerful plays that they can do, they can recycle and they interact with each other more than your kind of just mosh pit of cards. Like a warrior kind of toolbox help. maybe that yeah, had random warriors that you have to yeah. Do. yeah. Um What that means is that your old school beatdown deck probably won't cut it by today's standards. Um, it isn't meant to be like just a harsh bubble burst, but you know, it's important to note that that's how it's going to happen. Usually when you face newer decks, newer archetype-based decks, they'll, you know, molly -wop you if you don't kind of keep up with the Yeah, the I trend. mean, it's, it's kind of like the argument of the VCR versus the DVD player in today's day and age. I mean, you don't see VCRs anywhere, and everything that you even want to get nowadays is on DVD. So you want to keep your VCR because you like being retro and old school, but you can't watch your favorite movie because it's only out on DVD and you want to get a DVD player. Yeah, um, my advice would be learn new archetypes, find ones you like. The same goes for those summoning mechanics like synchroing, disease summoning, pendulum summoning. Yes. I know for a lot of older players who get back in the game, the popular idea is just to be like, oh, well, like, forget these new things, I don't want to play with them. But the truth is that even if you don't like synchro summoning or disease summoning or pendulum summoning, it's worth learning at least how it functions, you know, things like that, um, just so you can fight against it if nothing else. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I remember actually when I, I took a break from the game because I moved out of state and I just left all my cards here. So by the time I had come back and I actually started picking my cards, um, I came back at the beginning of the Synchro era. And I, I said the beginning, but I'm pretty sure it was well into it by the time I came back. And um, that being said, I didn't know anything about it either. And my first thing was, I'm not playing that shit. Because one, you know, we, 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 none of us like change. We, we never like change unless it's our own personal idea. And so everybody's playing. And remember, because uh, Stardust came in the structure deck, I think it was. And I saw it at Toys R Us, and I was yeah, like, like a ten. And I, uh, yeah, like it, was, it was something weird, like yeah. a, you know, something. But it was like it came out of something. You saw it through the uh, through the, through the mm -hmm. window of it. But anyway, it was like I saw it, and I was like, I used to play this shit, but what the fuck is this white card? I never seen it, so I was like, I wasn't playing it. And then I realized if I wanted to actually get better, and because you know you play the game and you start to lose, and nobody likes to lose all the time. Even if you are just here for the fun of the game, nobody likes to lose all the time. So right. you kind of like, oh man, maybe I should look into this. And so then. I kind of started. Had, I started. I kind of started molding to become modern with the times, and I've kept up since then. But you know, if you you really have to accept it, you know, yeah. at least learn the stuff. Even if you don't like it, learn it. An extra deck is is a necessity in this day and age. No matter even if you're playing just for fun, you're you gotta have run, something in there. You, you need some other battle tactics. Um, another kind of new concept that didn't necessarily exist before now is hand traps. Um, so what do I mean by this? There are certain. Luke was like the only one from back in the day, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, roughly. Probably it's Karibo. Uh, oh, yes, Karibo yeah. is um, the real... Hand traps Karibu. are these cards that... Basically, they're monster cards, but their effects actually activate in your hand, usually by discarding them. So how this works is, like... You might remember a card called DD Crow. You can discard it from your hand and banish the card from your opponent's graveyard, and it's a quick effect, uh, spell speed 2, which means I can activate it in my turn or in your turn, and I can, like, chain it to things that you activate. So, like, if you activate... Call the haunted and target a monster in your grave to summon. I can chain my DD Crow, banish that monster. Call the haunted doesn't have a target, so it's resolved. Well, um, there are several new ones. A lot. The three, I guess, main ones are like Effect Veiler, which you can discard during your opponent's main phase, and it's in general, it's only during your opponent's main phase. Veiler, can you say main? Oh, you your opponent, yeah, Effect I'd say, Veiler. I say Maxi. Oh, yeah, I'm no, there's other one. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, um, my face. Yeah, you heard nothing. So, yeah, Effect Veiler. 
is this card, you can discard it during your opponent's main phase and negate the effect of a monster on their side of the field. So what does this mean? Well, when I normal summon a monster with an effect... You can normal summon Stratos. Elemental Hero Stratos. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to activate my effect in search of a hero. You can discard Valor from your hand and negate my Stratos' effect. And that's no that. It doesn't get its effect back until the end of the turn. So this is very useful. The next popular one is Max C. Um, Explain it. I've talked enough. Um, I don't know what you talk. But uh, yeah, nothing is uh, say it's called Maxi, and pretty much what this card is, it's another quick effect hand trap, spell speed two, that said during either player's turn, um, if you can get discard this card during either player's turn, I'm sorry, and immediately after your opponent was special summon, you, you draw a card. And that's first off, it's mandatory. So anytime your opponent was special summon in this current turn that Maxi is activated, you get to draw a card for it. So each time they, they special summon another monster, that's always a free card. Um, and it's also a once per turn thing. And it works on either player's turn, also during any phase. So, I mean, if your opponent tries to get slick and do something in the end phase, you're still allowed to chain Maxi to it because it most likely will start a chain. And it's, it's right. Here. So, very useful I card. Like a relatively new one is called Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Um, it's similar to Effect Railer, um, but not quite so. When any face up card activates its effect, a card that was already face up on the field, you can discard Ghost Ogre Snow Rabbit and you immediately destroy that card. The important thing to know about this is that it doesn't necessarily doesn't negate, negate the card's effect. It doesn't negate the card's effect, it just destroys the card. But right. for certain cards, destroying it means it won't get an effect. Because it has to be on the field to resolve. Or destroying it could just help you. So, you know, maybe when this monster activates its effect, they still get the effect, but you destroy the card. And so maybe the threat's kind of averted then. And you should know that Ghost Ogre has a big old booty. Yeah, and, so, and all these hand traps are useful because they tend to double as monsters that are good for other things. Effect Valor, for example, is a level 1 tuner monster. Correct. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit is actually a level 3 level tuner three monster two. with 1800 eight defense, defense, so kind of useful. Max C is a level 2 insect. Um, it's searchable by a few things, and yeah. when it goes in your grave, you can bring it back with, say, Debris Dragon, something like that. So those are all kind of important things to note about those. Mm -hmm. um, what are kind of other new concepts that exist? in today's game. Um, I would say, maybe an important thing to note, is that floodgates. If you, yeah, this is rough. Rough to break to people. In Yu-Gi-Oh, maybe you used to stop your opponent using, I guess the only kind of classic floodgates button, maybe Decree. Decree. Royal Decree. Trap and Fake the Virus. Well, today, um, there are these things that people commonly, affectionately, call floodgates. Oh. Jowling the spiritual as well as I want to. Yeah, floodgates are these cards that basically have effects that shut your opponent out. They say you can't do something. No, you yeah. So mis there's a card called Mistake. It's a continuous trap. While it's on the field, neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them. This means your opponent cannot search. I can't use a reinforcement of the army. Oh, I can't use you know Stratos. If Sangin was here, I can use Sangin. I can't search cards from my deck to my hand. Really powerful card. Other examples: Imperial Iron Wall. Neither player can banish cards. Now, back in the day, you might think that this type of card isn't really... Like, why is that useful? Well, today, banishing is really popular. A lot of cards banish to activate their effects. For those older players, if you remember the Teledad format, just imagine how powerful Imperial Iron Wall would have been back in the Teledad format. Like, the whole point of that deck was banishing everything from the graveyard for Malicious or for the dad that you were going to drop, the, right. uh, or the, um, the, or the Magician of Chaos. But if you go Imperial Iron Wall, you pretty much stun you give. So. Yeah, and so, you know, in their set of floodgates, there's a card called Banny Zimbiness. Oh, God. Neither player can special summon monsters. Really powerful effect. Um, and there are a few others, you know, lose one turn, sort of, stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, floodgates, they're not so much anything you have to use, but it's just important to know that they exist. And it makes the value of something like MST a lot higher right. uh, these days. You need to have outs to these cards. Um... Okay. Maybe let's just talk more about kind of the, the price of the game and kind of what's expected of that. The game's always kind of had its expensive points, I'd say. I think, yeah, in the UDE days, it was really expensive. But today, um, I would say that it's expected to... You're kind of expected to buy a certain degree of... Like, if you're, if you're getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh, you can try to just kind of collect stuff. But the thing is, you're probably going to need to, do, to overhaul everything. Yeah. Uh, anything that was <clears throat> released before, like, you know, 2000... Nineteen. I want to say 10, Honestly. maybe even, even 12. Probably, yeah, probably even later than that. Yeah, probably yeah I mean, you know, you, it probably isn't really very useful. Um, you're, 
egg saver deck can't hang, sorry, you know, your black wings that, well, they got their support, but you know what I mean. Like, a lot of older decks just can't hang. What you probably have to do is um, buy extra decks, a big one to invest in. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that extra deck is probably the biggest thing. I mean, it's probably the most cheap, uh, most expensive part of the deck because, I mean, you can play a cheap, all coming 40 card main deck of just, I, and I, I'm not going to say jank, but we'll say just a specific archetype that does decent. But your extra deck is going to be where all the power is because you're going to be using that more often. Your main deck is pretty much there just to tutelage into your extra deck. So, and right. just like in, in the old days when we had staples like Regeki and Harpy's Feather Dust and things like that, we also still now have staples in regards to extra deck. Like there's a card called um, Evil Swarm Excite Tonight, which um, I think when it debuted, when it first came out, it was like $90. And even now to this day, I found out it's still $40. Still pretty pricey. Yes, yeah, $40 now. Um, there's things like um, Castell, the other the, the the, well, the Sky Musketeer, yeah, stuff like but, uh, that. Like, yeah, the things like that. So now, not only do you have uh, do you have staples in your main deck that you want to, that you always want to try to collect, you've also now got staples in your extra deck that you want to try to have because even though they're kind of pricey, their effects are so good that you, they're just kind of pivotal to the, to your game if you actually play those or those ranks for those kind of cards. Some recommendations for maybe what you can buy to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh would be um, every year now we're getting these things called Mega Tens. Um, so we got one last year, and it basically just is, it's a reprint set of all the major hollows and useful commons right. of the last, say, four sets. Yeah. And so um, that's really cool because the Megaton 2015 just came out last month and it contains reprints of major cards from Duelist Alliance, the new Challengers, um, and the Primal team. Origins, and yeah, Primal, yeah. yeah. So like recently <clears throat> released cards, those are good purchases. They have lots of reprints. They're reasonably priced. They're you cheaper. can pick yes. them up and you can get a lot of cards and a lot of staples and just kind of standards in today's game really quickly. Um, also, you know, Legendary Collection 5Ds is a recently released pack. It's got a lot of synchros if you want to like, you know, catch up on your synchro game because it has all the all the dragons, all yeah, the level yeah. seven ones, things like that. Structure decks these days tend to reprint certain commons um, pretty quickly. Or certain hollow cards as common, yeah. which is good. Like I think we just got the uh, Synchron Extreme uh, structure deck. And Effect Butter came out originally as an Ultra, and of course it's gone through numerous uh, rarities since yeah. then. But now you get to get it, I think, as a common, as a, as a common in the structure day. So for those of you who can never really afford uh, Effect Butter, or never want to buy them, this is a perfect way to pick up a copy of Gold Series. Gold um, Series. Every really year good. we get in the spring a set called Gold Series where there's a lot of reprints. Um, and a lot of new cards, like some new cards. cards and things, like, things that are actually pretty helpful. Stuff like that. So yeah. those are ty the types of things you'll want to look into getting if you're kind of a returning player. That's yeah, true. Um, any kind of just last tips? Um, kind of miscellaneous stuff. If research. Is. If you're gonna get back to the game, you gotta pick, you, you gotta know what's hot. You gotta know what you're planning to be facing. I mean, if a lot of people don't play competitive, but, but a lot of people do. And you, I mean, if you do or you don't, you still wanna know what's good out there. Uh, one, because if you do, let's just say you happen to get a good card and you don't want to trade it for anything horribly like off price and, and get a bad deal. But also at the same time, if you do decide you want to play competitively, you also want to know what to be looking for for yourself and as far as your opponent playing against you because. If you do a lot of research on, on decks and cards and things like that, it helps you to where you're not so surprised by a, a, the game once you're playing. Because nobody likes to have to play against somebody who has to pick up every card that they read, I mean, that they play yeah. because they don't know be what familiar. it does. Right. Be very familiar with the game, I mean, just in general. So I think research is probably the most important thing about getting back into the game. Researching and knowing what's out there, what's available to you, and what's going to be uh, something you're going to face. And be willing to let go of the past a bit. That, that unfortunately, your old Warrior Beatdown deck doesn't work, your old Yumi deck doesn't work, your old Fireburn deck, it doesn't cut it. And I'm you know, kick your ass. it's tough, yeah, really well. Um, it's tough, and sometimes you'll get back in the game and be like, wow, this is so unfair. How can this deck just oh, do this yes. shit over and over and over? And you get so many pluses and so many big monsters and so many just destroys everything. The thing is, um, your old decks don't cut it. And to not, to, to try to kind of de deny that and be like, oh, you know, I'll make my old anti-meta gadget thing work. No, it really can't. Um, the the sooner you just embrace synchros, exes, um, pendulums, you know, like the sooner you accept your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> He's not kidding. Yeah, but, you know, the sooner that you do that, the better you'll, you'll be. Don't be kind of a stubborn guy who's right. in the room and doesn't want to accept any new things, but still gets angry when he loses. When he loses, but he has the chance you to make it up. There's actually some guys at my shop, they, every time a new deck comes out, they immediately think that it's broken. 
Oh, that, that's that's broken. That's stupid. What can I make that? That's stupid. They don't believe yeah. in the mirror force. They think that you can't use staples. Um, they're not gonna pick up any of the new cards, and that's fine if you choose that that's what you want to do. But once, like you said, don't complain about losing to these cards if you're not willing to step up your game. So yeah. I don't mind up my game. I mean, it's not like it's illegal or a, or immoral to do it. So get your game on. <sighs> anyway, now that he's gone. Subscribe. <laughs> oh. <No. laughs> yeah, right. but those are. We hope that those tips were helpful for you guys. If you're getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh, maybe even if you're just a new player, some of this stuff might still help you a lot too. Um, definitely, just you know, learn as much as you can. Don't be afraid to learn new things. You'll it'll be rough at first. A lot of your older cars might not work out. You might have to you know learn some new stuff, buy some new stuff, take some losses. Yeah, it does. But. Yu-Gi-Oh is still fun. Don't let anybody convince you. You'll, you'll meet a lot of people who will be like, Yu-Gi-Oh, sh- yeah, it's crazy now. Right. It's not funny I switched anymore. the magic. I switched yeah. the magic. That's fine. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh is still fun. Yu-Gi-Oh, if anything, is actually more fun these days. There's yeah. way more things that can happen. It's way faster paced. It's way more exciting and tense. And like, you know. Your, lim- your, your, your options are limitless. So. Yeah, so definitely um, do what you got to do. Catch back up. You made a good decision. Uh, and we hope you guys liked the video. We know it was really long, but... Uh, that's pretty much how our videos are these days. Yeah, we just like talking to we, you guys. We just yell for like 30 minutes these yeah. days. And uh, and if you will listen to us, we yeah, will speak. So uh, don't have a problem with it. All right, that's going to be that. Remember to subscribe if you like this video because uh, we wasted pretty much 30 minutes of our afternoon. In your life. Yeah. And you'll never get this back. So the least you can do is thumbs up. And also follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Twitch because we live stream sometimes. And... Um, Challenge Paul on doing their work. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you see me, challenge me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so enthusiastic. <laughs> so that's all. So leave comments with your other tips. What would you share with a new returning player? Or if you're a new returning player, you can be like, thanks for this video. It's so great. I'm going to send you a hundred bucks and subscribe to your channel. You make my day. We take, we take food stamps too. Yeah. EBT cards. And Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Any cards are fair game around here. Um, so... That's all. We'll catch you guys later. Uh, Good luck with getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh! Peace.